Hello, everyone. Welcome to this series of interviews today, a very uh, hot topic and very concerning topic linked to cybersecurity, but more about security in general. We have with us Janice Richardson, who is an expert to Council of Europe and co-author of dozens of publications, including Bullying Perspective Practices and Insight, Internet Literacy Handbook, and Digital Citizenship Education Handbook. With Janice, we would discuss cyber bullying. Uh, we thought of organizing this interview in the context of the International Safer Internet Day, which we have the pleasure to welcome Janice, also as one of the co-initiators um, initiative starting in 2004. So think about it, already 19 years, uh, we are trying and struggling to make the internet safer and it was originally launched by Safe Borders Network in Luxembourg. Janice, thank you so much for being with us. Good morning and thank you. I'm delighted to be here to talk about this very important topic. Before we start, if someone uh, watching us is in a need of help, they are subject to cyberbullying, please check the comments section below. We would post a list of helplines in Europe and you can find your country to find more targeted help. But we will discuss the big picture because the big picture is very concerning as well. You, if you have issue with bullying, you're not alone. There are uh, hundreds thousands of people every day that are calling these hotlines to find help. In fact, one of five students report being bullied. This means if you know five students, you could think of five students in your network, at least one of them is bullied. But Janice, what is really cyberbullying about? What it is for you and why is it a problem for school age kids? Well, it's a form of violence, and I think that's what's very important. It's actually violence, using electric communication to intimidate or threaten someone. It's a question of power play. One person trying to get the power over another person and very often involving a lot of others in this. Of course, bullying is not just an issue for children. It's an issue for many people. And bullying online seems to be much worse for a number of reasons that we'll go into later. It's interesting to look at a long-term study done by the Professor Olwius because he found over 40 years of study that being involved in bullying, either being the bully or being bullied, can have a long-term impact on health and on social and economic well-being. For example, young people who are bullies actually have far greater risk of having a criminal record by age 25. But you can find more of that by looking up Professor Olwius's long-term study. What you and mentioned, Janice, is also uh, harassment um, and bullying in general. It's is, is the same kind of an action or, or, or abuse. But uh, how do you differentiate between traditional bullying uh, and the online uh, bullying water, the differences and co convergence, as well as how would you distinguish the harassment from, let's say, uh, the extreme part? Well, no, uh, around 60% of cyberbullying actually begins with what we call traditional or offline bullying. And that's really important to note. One of the very big difficulties is that it actually follows the person being bullied into very private places. It's relentless. And because no one is around and seeing what's happening, then the person who's being bullied has great difficulty making himself, herself, understood, reaching out to others. But it's important to know that this can also vary considerably. For example, I work a lot in Morocco, Tunisia, and other places in Northern Africa. And there, around 42% of young people are bullied at some point. The other thing is that boys there are bullied more than girls, whereas usually it's the other way around. And cyberbullying 
often becomes a question of physical violence. Therefore, it, it, it's almost the opposite with cyberbullying turning into physical violence in certain places. This is why we, the people working in bullying, against bullying, really need to keep an eye on the research, to keep an eye on the trends, to understand what's happening and the best ways that we can act. This also refers to parents. Just keep an eye on that research online so that you can understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. And to understand what is going on, it's very important to be able to adapt also the approach um, to countering and to preventing the cyberbullying. We have seen increase, unfortunately, in the share of, um, of uh, people when, and in general at any age that are cyberbullied between 2007 and 2019, I, I read between 18% of people to 37% in growing now. Um, besides this volume, what are the trends really? How is it changing the cyberbullying so that we can then adapt our um, countering measures accordingly? Um, that, well, I, I was recently reading, I sit on the board of Snapchat, and I was recently reading their figures. And in fact, one of the biggest issues right now is hacking of profiles. And well, once you hack someone's profile, of course, you can do a whole lot of damage to their social network. It shows you how very different uh, forms bullying can take. Um, I think also it's important to think about the time we spend online. When young people spend too much on, time online, they're not interacting with their family. They're not developing their social, emotional understanding. Weaken family ties, weaken community interactions mean that young people have far less insight into their own behavior and react in ways where in a face-to-face -face situation, they just wouldn't do it because there would be too many comments around them. But there are any many other forms that are taking place. For example, in online games, a lot of bullying goes on. And it, it's very insidious because there are moderators in all of the social media, the games environments. However, there are many special ways that a child can dig at another child without adults around really understanding that it was a very mean comment that could have a lot of reactions. I had an interesting experience in the Seychelles. Suddenly there was a lot of bullying and cyberbullying going on, something that was more or less unheard of up until the time when young people got their mobile phones. We researched the situation and found that, in fact, the bullying was going on in places where there weren't adults and there'd not been a transition from this close adult supervision to allowing young people to do what they wanted on the mobile phone. So this, I think, is a call for parents to think about the parental tools that exist also in places like Instagram and to really know what the young people are doing online, know who they're communicating with and having a talk about what's happening online. So it is good to know that parents have tools now to see what is happening online, but only about 50% of the people bullied actually speak about it, share uh, with an adult um, when it concerns kids. Um, how can we prevent and react if we don't know? So uh, what, what should we uh, do to mitigate or prevent this bullying behavior impacting kids? Well, I actually have a very interesting project running in Scandinavia, it's called the Smart Bus, where we work with magicians to present our ideas and to understand what young people are doing online. And one thing we've discovered there, well, it's not a discovery, other people will say it, um, is that young people do not go to adults because they consider it makes the situation worse. If an adult intervenes with the teacher, the whole class knows, and then it's a domino effect. What they do is 
to go to friends to get help. So I think we have to focus our effort on young people, on peer education, on showing young people how they can help their friends when there is a problem of bullying, and also how to think about the impact of the comments that they're making online and how this can also have a snowball effect in bullying when they really don't intend to bully in the beginning, but it builds and builds until it becomes cyberbullying. We also, as adults, have to think very carefully about the side effects of our campaigns. There have been many anti-bullying complaints that campaigns and in a lot of cases, we've discovered that it's really made bullying worse because of copycat behavior, giving young people ideas and they think, oh, this is interesting, let's have a try. So we need to think carefully before we implement a campaign. Who are we going to work with? What are we really trying to achieve? Have we piloted correctly to understand the side effects of what we're doing? And are we measuring when once the campaign is being rolled out to really see that we're having an impact. I think all of those things are very important in the prevention and the reaction to cyberbullying and offline bullying. This is a very interesting uh, approach and I, I completely relate to it. First is um, don't do harm. Yeah, We say in Bulgarian English as well that the road to hell is, is, um, is full of good intentions. So we have to be very uh, mindful of the complexity of the topic, but also I love the fact that you are um, inviting us to think of the kids not as the as, as the victims, but as the as the warriors, as the protectors of the safer internet and of their friends and uh, relatives. Um, and what campaigns are there? Hopefully, thoughtful. But what instruments are there for kids? What actions are taken in Europe? You also advise uh, those in this of. Um, of governments, uh, 52 ministers, you mentioned earlier, uh, to me, you advise 52 ministers on the strategy for digital transformation, working with countries like Morocco, you mentioned Seychelles, also very different cultural environments. UNICEF, a big player in this field, what actions are taking place so that we can follow and maybe support? Well, first of all, let me mention UNESCO's anti-bullying month in November, November every year. I think this is very important because if you go to the UNESCO website, you'll see all of the actions that are taking place. And I think that this is inspirational for people out there working in the field. Also, let me mention Enable the European Network Against Bullying in Learning and Leisure Environments. This is a project that I set up with the European Commission back in 2014. It ran till 2016 uh, with five countries to begin with, but then more than a dozen countries. And today there are several PhD students in Greece actually investigating the impact of Enable because it has been impactful. Why? It's focused on peer education, but not peer education with peers telling other peers, well, you should do this or you should do that, but actually getting to, uh, in a whole school approach, getting all of the classes together to decide one big action for the anti-bullying month in November. Uh, at that stage, of course, that, that the month didn't exist, but this was more or less the idea mm -hmm. of enable, find a date in the year, work with all of the young people in the school and define a way that they're going to raise awareness. Raise awareness is of course not the answer, but if a child is putting out a campaign to raise awareness. They're thinking about what is bullying, what is cyberbullying, how do we stop it, etc. And there's a very important intellectual process going on there called metacognition, where the child is led to think objectively of their own 
actions and the impact that it could be having on others. So I would recommend that you take a plunge into the Enable project, which is enable.eun.org. Have a look at what we did in this project. There are many similar projects like it, but focus on peer education. And one of the spin-offs that we found in the Enable project was that actually the teachers said, well, we're not sure about the bullying, but what we're finding when young people work together on a campaign like this is that the whole environment in the classroom is much more friendly, uh, much easier to get across messages to young people. So I would advise that people look at campaigns like that to try to understand what works, what doesn't work. And you will find that in the book that you mentioned earlier. Okay, so we would post uh, some of the most uh, of some of the links that um, Janice has just mentioned to make it easier for everyone to make um, their way. But do engage, um, do enable also other kids. And here you mentioned something that is always very close to my heart as a cybersecurity professional is the identity theft. I uh, thought a few years back this is the uh, big new trend. Uh, back then, I thought more of economic gains, but what you're bringing now on the table is actually the stakes are much higher. Those identity thefts could impact and make life worse for many people. Um, but what this would be my recommendation for my peers, cybersecurity professionals, let's focus and try um, to make identities as, as secure as possible because this could really uh for a company it's one account for a person it's all their lives so we have to uh, look at it as this perspective and protect it what other uh recommendations you have for future work i i grasp the management well the thoughtfulness the peer uh education and engagement what other recommendations well i would suggest that you have a look online tomorrow at snapchat because they brought out a digital civility index. And if only schools and families would look at this digital civility index, talk to their children about it, then young people would perhaps become more aware of what they may be doing, which may trigger uh, bullying and cyberbullying. Next, I would say social emotional development. We've heard a little bit about it recently, but we can't talk enough about cyber well being. I know that Instagram has brought something out over the last months. Quiet time is one, one area, nudges is another. Just take a look because there are different ways now where these social media providers are trying to show young people that it's all about well-being. There are many ways to look at your own well-being online and the well-being of people around you. So otherwise, I've said social emotional development, I cannot stress it enough. Mm. Help our children understand that when they're disappointed, they don't have the same reaction as when they're angry, because right now they're having a lot of difficulty differentiating between the different emotions. Also, we need to take that one step back. Young people have not learned that you don't receive a message and then lash out immediately. Take a moment of reflection. Try to think of the person on the other side side of the communication so that because sometimes we misconstrue what was said I think I, we've got to work with governments I think we need to have a more unified approach we need a place where all of this information is put together thank you for underlining cybersecurity. it's vital Thank you so much, Janice. I think it's very valuable, your knowledge. Only 15 minutes you managed to put together uh, a huge database of information, advice, knowledge, experience. I hope each of us take it and um, help make our cyberspace a safer and kinder well-being place.